Hello, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, it's a continuation of a, of a little series we got going on where we look at a, an older game that was released a few years ago. And we give you a little rough overview of how it plays and we tell you what we do like, what we don't like, and then we compare and contrast it to other games that have been released subsequently. And we tell you whether or not it's worth bothering with in 2019. So today we're gonna to be looking at a game called Archipelago and this is a game that was released in 2012 and it was uh, designed by some French geezer called Christophe Bollinger who's responsible for such masterpieces as Earth Reborn, uh, A Dog's Life, uh, Illegal and um, yeah. So yeah we'll be looking at Archipelago, we'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like and then we'll come back and we'll just give you a rough summary and tell you whether or not it's worth bothering with in 2019 and uh, if you like this video please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the subscribe button somewhere around here, leave a comment in the down below, tell us what you think, whether you agree with uh, our analysis of this game and uh, yeah we'll see you after we run upstairs for no reason at all. Board games 4K. So, Archipelago, Christophe Bollinger, French bloke, and um, yeah, this is a 4X type game. 4X, maybe it's a 3X, but yeah, but as it, it's a we're, we're getting to that. It's a 4X game, so 4X expand explore exploit exterminate right yeah so it's a 4x game and in this one it sees you trying to conquer the uh, the new world been an archipelago in the new world and um so this game takes place over six phases uh, the first phase being disengagement then you uh, determine the order of play then you resolve all the population effects to do with the export market uh, surplus workers and that sort of stuff then you uh, balance the archipelago then you take your your actions and then you uh, deal with the evolution cards that are available so uh, yeah we're just gonna have a we're gonna try and give you a little quick rules rough rules overview uh, i don't know why i'm doing this because it's it's a bloody complicated game but yeah we're gonna try and give you a little rough rules overview now so the first thing you're going to do, the first phase of this game is disengagement. So the best way to think about this is that any meeple that was doing something in the previous turn isn't doing anything now. So you just take the meeples off whatever they were doing, and uh, apart from if they're in a, in a town, I think. And uh, yeah, and then they're not doing anything. They're available. They're, they're non-engaged units. Right, that's it. Phase two is the order of play. This is how you're going to determine turn order for the for the coming round. And all you do is you blind bid, you put a load of coins in your hand, and you go one, two, three, and then you reveal, and whoever's got the most the most coins in their hand will pay the money to the bank, and uh, yeah, and then you you determine turn order that way. And that's as simple as that. If there's a tie, then you keep going, and um, yeah, and that's it. So the third thing you're going to do, you're going to um, you're going to deal with the population effects. And in this one, you've got you've got four four mini boards, four sub boards on this one. You've got the domestic market. You've got the export market, then you've got the surplus workers board, and you've got the colony stability board. So what you'll be doing, you'll be looking to see whether you've got any uh, surplus, any work, surplus worker icons or any rebellion icons, and then you'll be moving the the rebellion or the surplus workers meeples on on the track to reflect the changes in uh, in this sort of conflict, I suppose. So you know, you know, so if you've got too many surplus workers, for instance, you'll be moving the rebellion up because obviously people don't like being out of work, right? So yeah, that's the uh, that's a population effects phase. The fourth thing you're going to do is you're going to be working out how the balance of the archipelago. And uh, what you'd be doing with this one, on the, on the back of every evolution card, there is a crisis that needs to be resolved at this point. And you've got the top crisis, which is the domestic crisis, and then you've got the bottom one, which is the export crisis. So what you'll be doing on this one, you'll be you'll be resolving the crisis, and you'll be putting all the, all the meeples that are out there on their backs, and then you'll have to pay a certain type of resource to, in order to stand up so many meeples. And any meeples that aren't stood up after paying the cost of the, the crisis, they become rebels and uh, you'll be moving up the rebellion marker in to reflect that. And at any time if the population marker goes past the rebellion marker, then the game is over and everyone loses. So that's something you've got to be mindful of, right? That's the balance of the archipelago. Obviously, if there's a red crisis, you don't resolve that. They only get resolved when you flip over an evolution card in the sixth phase, right? This is complicated. So the fifth phase, this is the meat of a game wheel to where you'll be taking actions. And you've got, a, you've got an action wheel and you'll be taking actions on that wheel. So 
the first action you're going to take is you're going to be able to harvest resources. And the resources you've got, you've got uh, fruit, you've got meat, which is cattle, you've got stone, you've got ore, uh, fish, yeah? So you, all you'll be doing is you'll be putting your one of your action markers on the action wheel, and then you'll be taking your meeple and putting it on a resource that is on a tile that you control, right? And then you'll take the resource and put it behind your screen. It's as simple as that. How easy is that? So the second action that you could do is uh, you could tax your population. And with this one, you just take, take some money. You get a number of florins for every worker that you, you control, right? Uh, but the trouble is you will have to put the rebellion marker up for every time you tax, yeah? But so obviously people don't like being taxed. They get angry about it. I do as well, and I'm sure you do. So the third thing you can do is you can, you can perform a transaction and you can buy or sell on the domestic market or on the export market. You take a cube off one of the corresponding markets and you pay the cost. And obviously, depending on how many cubes are left on the export or domestic market, this may affect the population effects in pre one of the previous phases, right? So the fourth action is exploration. Yeah, and with this one, what you'll be doing, you'll be taking a tile, you've got a stack of tiles in a tray. You'll be taking one of the tiles, you'll take, be taking a tile and you'll, uh, you can either take the tile off the top or you can take the tile underneath. If you take the tile underneath and you take it blind, you have to take that tile. But with the other one, you can use either side of it, right? And you place it down. Terrain needs to match match these things, right? So you have to put water against water or um, land against land or mountains against mountains. And then you'll take an exploration token, which is acts as a wild resource, yeah? And it may affect some end game scoring. So yeah, that's the explore action. So five is reproduction. You'll put your one of your action markers on the wheel on that space, and then you'll you'll get an extra meeple and you'll put it on an island that you control. And just you've got to remember that you, you can only have it's three meeples on one tile. Yeah, so two meeples, and you can get an extra meeple. So the fifth action that you can do is you can recruit. And what you'll do, you'll take a you'll move the surplus worker track down one and then you'll take one of your meeples and you'll put it on a, a place that you control and this is basically reproduction but without taking that action okay and obviously uh, there is a cost you have to pay the relevant cost when you recruit god this is getting a bit long drawn out isn't it so the seventh action you can do is migration it's probably the most complicated but where you got to think about it is it's a way of, of, of moving your meeples from tile to tile or moving them across water and the way you move them across water is you have to have a ship on on the intersection between each tile so if you're moving a, a meeple across two water tiles, then you'll need to have a ship in the on the, the line that joins the two tiles and you can move them across. So that's almost like they're sort of jumping across, right? That's as simple as that. It's, it's a bit of confusion with this one, but uh, yeah, it's, it's actually really quite simple when you get your way around it. So the eighth action you can do, good grief, is that you could build, you can you take the construction action. So you could build a port, you could build a market, or you can build a town, or you could build a monastery. And you build them, each one of them's got a, a, an extra ability that's uh, related to it, supports so that you take an extraction on the export market. Towns that let you control and control the harvest and let you control the, the tile. Uh, monasteries uh, affect rebellion, so if, if you've got a monastery there, the meeple that's on the monastery doesn't get affected by rebellions, and so on and so forth. So also you can, you can build ships and all that sort of stuff. You just pay the cost and you build it, yeah. So that's it, that's all the actions that you can take, and uh, it's quite simple, there's a lot of them, loads of depth and that. So you, we move on to the sixth phase, which is the evolution car phase, and you've got like a, a display of cards that you can, you can buy. So so you pay the cost and you put the card in front of you and if it's got like a sort of like a little rainbow arrow that means that every, you, anyone else can pay the, the uh, number of florins and they get to use that action on their turn if it's not been used already but with the evolution cards you can either buy one and you can turn one to make it cheaper or more expensive you so see you turn them clockwise or you can turn two cards in the display and when a card gets turned in all the way around to where the little skull icon is, it gets removed, and then you draw another one, right? And if you get a, at this point, if you've got a red crisis that you would get, it gets revealed, you've got to resolve that crisis. So yeah, that's the six, good grief, that's the six phases of Archipelago. And you've got to remember that you've, at the beginning of the game, you've got a global goal that everyone's got to aspire to complete. And then you've got a personal hidden goal that nobody else knows about. But if you, when it comes to scoring that personal goal, other players can can score from your personal goal if they meet that criteria. So yeah, that's the that's a rough, oh, good grief, overview, over bloated view of Archipelago, and um, yeah, so that's we'll move on, and uh, we're going to tell you what we do like 
about this one. So, Archipelago, what do we like about this game? I mean, the first thing we got to mention is it, it's huge, it's complex. We, we love we love these massive, overblown, huge, complex games, strategy games. It starts, the, the thing about this is it starts off really small with one, one tile where you've got your, you've got your meeples, and then you can expand out, and you see this Archipelago evolve as time goes by. And um, yeah, there's so many actions you can take. I mean, you're never bored with what actions you can do because there's eight different actions. You you're always left with with something meaningful to do with this one. Yeah, the uh, aesthetics of the game, goodness me, the, the artwork is absolutely brilliant. I mean, you look at some of the tiles and they the colours are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, whoever painted this, they should win an award for for the wonderful artwork that's been made on this one. You know, the, the mountains look gorgeous. There's so much detail, you know, you could look at, you could, you look at all the, the tiny little details, you can see the little people and all the little huts and all, all the, you know, you've got birds flying around. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, you think about King Domino, if you look at the artwork on, on, on that tile and game, and you can see the detail that's been put in. It seems as if they've borrowed that idea of all the minute details from this game. Yeah, so we did say that, you know, this may be a 3X game, but in my opinion, my regarded opinion, this is actually a 4X game, because if you add the War and Peace expansion and you look at some of the um, some of the crises that, that come out. You can stitch people up with this one because you don't have to contribute to the crisis. You can say, I'm not going to contribute anything and the next person's got to do it. So they're thinking, oh, if I don't contribute to this crisis, I'm going to get stuffed as well. So yeah, there is that sort of elim elimination element. You never, there's no player elimination, but you can, you, you can still, it's still a cutthroat journey through this game, especially with the War and Peace expansion, which is essential. Yeah, the fact that there's a huge, a vast array of evolution cards i mean the stack's about as thick as my head you know what i mean but yeah there's a massive array it keeps the game fresh you never know what's going to come out there's personalities of buildings to build there's wonders to build there's uh with the war of peace expansion there's these things that you, you can slice your, your neighbor's nuts off with this one and it's um yeah the evolution cards really really do make this game you know they, they add a bit of personality to the game they add a, a, a nice sort of backstabbing element and um yeah in fact anyone can use them you know all they've got to do is pay the money to you like anyone can use them so you've got to be careful what ones you buy because you know you think well i'm going to buy the one that gives me extra stone each turn but if, you, if you're not watching it somebody else could jump in there and, and grab it right and take and use that action on their turn so yeah you've got to be careful of that so yeah it really does add a bit of tension to the game these evolution cards so what don't we like about archipelago well it's not much to say here i mean there are a couple of little things that really do annoy me and one of the things is the main thing is that the game can finish abruptly and it can finish early so like we said if the population marker ever catches up and moves past the rebellion marker the game finishes and there may be a, a, a time when just because of something that happens in the game you, you you don't know that that's going to happen it just happens abruptly it's like oh it's over oh crap you know nobody's ready for it and um, yeah that's one of the things you know you you spend hours and hours and hours building up this engine that's producing all this stuff and you're just ready to pull the trigger on your objective card and then someone does something not realizing that it's going to finish the game right so yeah that's the, probably the main thing about this game is the possibility of an abrupt ending yeah the second thing is the rule book is absolutely atrocious i mean it makes absolutely no sense there's so i mean people are still asking questions about this game now there's been an official faq produced and it's still as muddy as hell and um, sometimes like with the migration action for instance you just gotta you gotta make an interpretation and then you just gotta go with it and hope that it's the right thing but i mean like with all games it, it really at the end of the day who cares as long as you're having a good laugh and you're having fun with it and you know you like the game itself then doesn't matter but yeah the rule book could have been better you know the final con about this one is that the game the game benefits from, from playing the long game you need to play the long game but this may sound weird but the fact is is that the long game is, is far too long right so the short game isn't enough you you find yourself wanting more and the medium game doesn't have enough uh, so you, you want to play the long game but it just takes too long you know you're sort of torn you want to play you want to keep playing this game want to keep playing this game but unless you've got people that can invest you know five or six hours into the long game then it's, it ain't gonna work you know but for me personally the other two variations of the game the medium short game they're not long enough right i know it sounds weird but tough so to summarize archipelago is it worth it is it worth it in 2019 
And I would say, absolutely yes. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's got everything. It's like lots of stuff from other games have come in and, and Christoph Bollinger has taken ideas from all these little games and chucked them in and made this big, massive pie that you can sink your teeth into, right? I mean, the first thing is, for me personally, this game's a classic now. You know, it's been out for seven years and it never gets old. It, if you get the War and Peace expansion, that adds so much to the game. It's a backstabbing, and you can you can have it adds conflict to the game. You've got the solo expansion. There's just so much to it. It looks to the past in in games like Catan. brings It brings that old Euro style game. It takes it and plonks it into a future context, right? And it's still relevant today. I can't think of anything that's been released in the last say couple of years. It's got this the same charm as this one. I'm, I'm struggling to to find another game. That, has this much depth, this much beauty, and this much complexity that comes together as a whole, yeah? And the fact this is a semi-co-op game that you, you, you're all working together, but at the same time working against each other, I mean, it's amazing. For a Euro game, that's that's just like unheard of, right? I mean, we, I've never seen anything like it before. This game, it, we still pull this game out regularly. Yeah, I think Christoph Bollinger, this is probably, the, he was at the top of his game when he'd done this one, because I think a lot of the stuff that he's done after this hasn't been nowhere near as good. Yeah, I mean, that's Archipelago. I would definitely recommend that you go out and get this one. It's unique and it's a one of a kind. I don't think there's anything that's been released subsequently that can touch this one. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of these 4X games. I mean, probably Eclipse maybe is like sort of kind of like the same sort of thing i don't know that's archipelago so if you like this video please consider subscribing to the channel and uh leave a comment down below and we'll see you in the next video